Ladies and gentlemen, today, the men and women of the United States Air Force, in keeping with one of the oldest traditions in the military service, pay special tribute to Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas J. Odell Jr. on the occasion of his retirement from over 24 years of distinguished service in the United States Air Force. The presiding officer for today's ceremony is the director, ICBM Systems Directorate, Colonel Luke C. G. Cropsey. At this time, please prepare yourselves for what is sure to be the most unique and unforgettable retirement ceremony you've ever seen. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. Mr. Richard Fawcett, will you please come online and give the invocation? Our dear Father in heaven, we come before you this morning in gratitude for the many blessings which you have given all of us and for the special purpose of celebrating the retirement of Lieutenant Colonel Nick O'Dell from the United States Air Force. Father, we are indeed grateful for you allowing Nick to be part of our life, each of our lives for the leadership he has shown as we have encountered the numerous problems and issues through the years as he has, as he has done our part just in service for this great country, for the genuine compassion and friendship of Nick as he has always given to those around him and supporting them in their lives, and for the extreme hard working ethic he has always maintained as he has acted in the service of his country. Father, as we gather together today, at the culmination of Lieutenant Colonel Odell's 24 plus years of service to his country, we ask for a special blessing to be upon him, his wife Jennifer, and his children as they end this chapter of their lives. We ask that his children's lives may be forever blessed because of the service he has freely given to others and for the true Christ-like example he has shown to them on how to live their lives in the service of others. We also ask a special blessing to be upon his good wife, Jennifer, as she has stood by his side faithfully for many years, allowing him to perform his duties while enduring the many sacrifices that she and her kids have had to endure. As Lieutenant Colonel Odell and his family now prepare to return to Montana, where they will continue their lives of service as they, re as they reunite with their parents, we ask that they may be protected in their travels, that they may be able to quickly set get set back to their normal life and that they be able to find the path you have established for them as they continue their lives in the service of you and for those around them. <clears throat> Father, at this time, as the world and the people of it are suffering with the COVID-19 virus, we ask for thy blessing to be poured upon, out upon them and those who are suffering, suffering, whether it be from physical effects of the virus or the economic toll that it has taken upon their lives. We ask that their suffering may be lessened and that they and that we as thy children in this experience we are going through that we need to do, draw closer to you. The need we have as a people to repent each day from our many shortcomings and the need we have to follow the pathway you have given 
for each of us to live throughout our lives as recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Father, once again, we're indeed grateful for the many blessings you have given to each and every one of us, for the opportunities we have to live in this great country. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Fawcett. Will everyone please be seated? There are a few special guests joining Lieutenant Colonel Adele on the video live stream today, whom we would like to recognize. Lieutenant Colonel Odell's spouse, Mrs. Jennifer D. Odell, and his son, Eli Odell. We would also like to recognize the other special guests dialing in to the YouTube live stream. His mother, Mrs. Mary Odell, his father, Mr. Nicholas J. Odell Sr., and his children, Michela, John, and Donovan Odell. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Cropsey. All right, team, it's my privilege and it's my honor this uh this morning to uh, retire Nick. And uh, for those of you that uh, have been around for any length of time at all, uh, you, you know what a central uh, part Nick plays, uh, not only in our organization, uh, but uh, right, quite frankly, across the extended ICBM enterprise. And I thought it would be appropriate uh, this morning uh, before we get started uh, to just, just kind of uh, step back for a minute and uh, uh, in a sense, review the bidding with regards to uh, the mission that we all have the privilege uh, of working uh, within the ICBM Systems Directorate. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to uh, also personally extend my welcome uh, uh, to Jennifer, uh, to Donovan, uh, to Michelle, and to John and Eli uh, for their uh, attendance this, uh, this morning with us. And uh, I also uh, want to give a shout out to uh, Nick Sr. and uh, Mrs. Mary O'Dell and uh, your attendance uh, online along with Nick's brothers, Tim and Bob, and his sister, Tina. So thank you for, for joining us today uh, remotely. We are under very unique circumstances, as I think everyone's uh, well aware, uh, but we're, uh, we're adapting and overcoming here. Uh, just like uh, Nick has demonstrated over uh, almost a quarter century of faithful service to the, to the nation. Uh, and so uh, we're going to press on here with, uh, with this uh, virtual retirement ceremony. And uh, I trust that it's... Uh, uh, it'll be meaningful for everyone that's uh, that's involved. Uh, but let me get back on point here with regards to the mission itself. Uh, and uh, let, let me start out by just talking briefly about deterrence and why deterrence is so important. Uh, so for those of you that may not uh, be as familiar with uh, our mission set, uh, our entire mission is basically built off the premise that uh, an ability uh, to maintain a, a nuclear capability in the face of a threat uh, will deter uh, potential adversaries from launching an initial threat of their own. Uh, and the ICBM uh, piece of that, uh, right, we typically call that the nuclear triad. It's, uh, it's composed of uh, bomber aircraft, uh, submarines, and uh, the land-based leg of the triad, which are the intercontinental ballistic missiles that uh, Nick has spent uh, his entire career uh, working. And within that environment, the ICBM uh, force is comprised of 400 on alert, 24-7 nuclear-capable strategic missiles. And uh, as we're fond of saying within, within the, the ICBM enterprise, our saying is, right, uh, anywhere in the world in 30 minutes or less, or the next one's free. And uh, Nick has been on uh, the sharp end of that stick. Uh, as a as a missileer uh, early on in his career, and uh, he knows all about uh, what turning keys looks like. Uh, but he's also been uh, on just about every other uh, facet of this enterprise that, uh, that you can imagine, and I'll step through those here in a minute. Uh, but what uh, I, want, I want to leave you with is is the fact that as a, as an ICBM force, uh, this mission is literally backstopping uh, the entire security of the free world uh, because without it. There isn't a national uh, security conversation that, ha that happens anywhere uh, that doesn't presuppose our ability uh, to maintain uh, combat-capable nuclear missiles that are safe, secure, and effective across the board for the American people. And, and Nick's career, quite frankly, has, has been uh, almost 25 straight years of making sure that that mission is uh, on solid ground. And uh, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to... Uh, take a quick trip down memory lane here and uh, I'm going to describe for you a little bit of, of Nick's background, uh, how he got to where he's at 
and uh, a couple of uh, highlights from his career that uh, are significant to him personally. So uh, let, me, uh, let me go all the way back to the very beginning. Uh, for those of you that may not be aware, uh, Nick was actually born at a very uh, early age, as in fact most of us are. Uh, to uh, his, uh, his parents, uh, Nick Sr. and Mary O'Dell, and uh, right, they, uh, they grew up in uh, uh, lovely Helena, Montana. Uh, Nick was actually born in Livingston, but uh, grew up in, in, in Helena, and he attended Capitol High School. And uh, as you might imagine, for uh, anybody uh, born, raised, and nurtured uh, in uh, the big sky country up north, uh, he has hunting, fishing, and uh, the outdoors literally baked into his DNA. And uh, we'll see the uh, recurring theme here throughout as we go. Uh, but anyway, he grew, he grew up there in Helena and, uh, and then uh, at some point figured out how to graduate from high school. And, uh, and then went to Montana State University. And uh, at, at Montana State, he graduated with a, a biology degree and uh, had an emphasis in fish and wildlife management. So uh, again, you see the theme starting early here, fish and wildlife management. Uh, involved the outdoors and uh, all things associated with uh, hunting and killing things to eat. So uh, on that note, uh, he, uh, he, he also uh, later on ended up with a master's degree from Emory-Riddle in uh, aerospace science and management and uh, uh, went, uh, went off from uh, his, his time there at Montana State and uh, he went to Vandenberg to uh, uh, go through the, uh, the lessons on uh, how, to, how to be a good ICBM officer. Uh, now, what's interesting here is uh, uh, right, I asked Nick, I said, hey, how, how, did, you, uh, how did you end up uh, go on the Air Force route, right? Uh, wh why not uh, one of the other uh, sister services that we all hold so near and dear? And uh, Nick's reply to that was pretty straightforward, actually. He said, well, uh, because my dad told me I couldn't go in the Army. Uh, his dad uh, actually is a uh, uh, former former Army grunt and uh, did uh, did time in Vietnam and, uh, and his, his grandfather as well. So, uh, and, and his uncle uh, actually was... Uh, uh, a pilot in Vietnam uh, flying O2s. So, so Nick actually has uh, a deep heritage on, uh, on his uh, family side with regards to service and in regards to uh, both Army uh, and, uh, and Air Force uh, background. So he, uh, he went ROTC, popped out of ROTC, uh, put on the blue, and, uh, and then headed out to Vandenberg uh, where uh, he went through uh, school for, uh, for missiles. Space and Missile School. He spent about six months out there. And then, uh, right when you know it, he joins the Air Force to see the world. And uh, where does he get shipped for his first duty assignment? You guessed it. Great Falls, Montana. Uh, so uh, he essentially heads uh, almost straight back home to where, uh, where he started. And uh, he takes on uh, his, first, his, his first professional challenge that, uh, uh, that he has with regards to uh, his professional life starting. Uh, and so as a, as a, a brand new missile officer, uh, he, uh, he starts out there at Maelstrom Air Force Base and uh, he works his way up through the kind of the, the gates there that uh, everybody uh, goes through as a, as a missileer. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, but probably, quite frankly, more important than his uh, budding career uh, was the fact that he, uh, he ran into uh, Jennifer again, uh, when he got back to, to Montana. Now I, I skipped over this part briefly, uh, but there's a story here that's worth telling. And unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do it justice here in the, uh, the brief overview that we have of, of the life and times of Nick Odell. Uh, but let me, let me just say this. If you ever have an opportunity, Nick, uh, how he ended up meeting, ultimately wooing and finally convincing Jennifer to marry him. It is a tale that's worth hearing. Uh, and I, I have to admit, the, uh, the, the current format is uh, somewhat of a challenge to my normal rules of engagement because usually at this point, I let the family know that all I have for information in front of me is what Nick has actually told me himself. And I have not obviously been able to verify uh, the extent to which all of the facts in the story are accurate. And so I usually tell the family that uh, they are weapons hot at any point along the line uh, to correct the record. 
So, uh, Jennifer, if uh, this isn't entirely accurate, it's completely Nick's fault for uh, skewing the facts in his favor. But uh, the way that he told it to me, uh, he gets back to Great Falls, and uh, one thing leads to another. He bumps into you again. Uh, and in his words, it seems like he actually hit it off with your uncle and aunt better than he did with you as uh, things kind of got restarted there. Uh, and at the end of this whole sequence, uh, you end up, I think, uh, convinced that Nick's the guy for you. And uh, somehow, by some miracle, uh, Nick uh, marries well above the station uh, after convincing you to uh, tie the knot. And uh, I, I can tell from uh, uh, knowing Nick personally and with all the, uh, the various uh, back and forth that we've had in, in preparation for this ceremony, uh, Jennifer, that you have played uh, a huge part in his life. Uh, you continue to be uh, a, a big priority in regards to the things that he holds near and dear. And uh, I know he's uh, absolutely looking forward to uh, what retirement has in store for both of you as you head back up to Montana. So uh, anyway, congratulations to Nick for, uh, for convincing uh, Jennifer to marry him here as uh, part of the uh, initial assignment that he had at Maelstrom. And uh, I, right, uh, confession's good for the soul. I'm pretty well convinced that the only reason I convinced my wife to marry me was because I showed up uh, in, a, in a nice looking uniform and, uh, you know, kind of wowed her early on. And I'm sure Nick would probably have a similar story to tell. Uh, okay, so he spends about three years, three, four years there in Montana on, uh, on the Missileer side of this business, uh, taking care of business, learning the ropes, and uh, figuring out, uh, right, what it looks like as, uh, as he climbs through uh, the experience and uh, pulls alert there uh, down in the uh, Launch Control Center. And uh, he, he, finally, uh, he finally gets wrapped up there uh, in uh, the early 2000s, and he heads over to what we euphemistically just call the mountain. So he gets stationed in Colorado and uh, at, uh, at Cheyenne Mountain, and uh, he actually uh, somehow manages to go from doing ICBM duty to doing space control work. Uh, and for those of you that uh, may not be aware, that's, that's actually, uh, from my experience anyway, uh, not an entirely uh, standard thing to be able to do. It seems like once the ICBM uh, force manages to get their flesh hooks in you, it's, uh, it's pretty hard to jump over to the other side. But Nick uh, manages to actually get over to the space control side of this business. And uh, he does a number of jobs there, including orbit analyst. Uh, he does some uh, ops training uh, related, uh, related things. Uh, and then ultimately ends up as a space battle manager and then as a flight commander uh, during his time there. Uh, at Cheyenne Mountain. Um, and uh, for, for those of you that have never been to Cheyenne and uh, haven't been uh, in, the, in the blast doors that uh, make that place uh, one of the most uh, secure and impregnable fortresses on the planet, uh, it, it's truly uh, an amazing capability. And uh, I'm sure if uh, Nick could tell us uh, any of the details about his time there, uh, he, he would uh, fundamentally uh, communicate to us the extent to which uh, that mission uh, continues to support uh, just about every single operation and uh, every single uh, service that we have across the Department of Defense. So he spends about three years uh, inside of a hole in the ground uh, in, in, uh, in the mountain there at, uh, at, at Colorado Springs. Uh, and then he gets sent out here to Hill. So if you haven't figured out, Nick really hasn't, figured, hasn't managed to get outside of about a a 500 mile radius of where he grew up at this point, uh, between uh, Great Falls, Colorado Springs, and then here at Hill, uh, he's kind of he's he's been uh, sitting right here on the Rocky Mountain Range uh, his entire career, and and we actually get him out here at Hill Air Force Base, and uh, he actually uh, goes from being a space officer, and uh, we attempt to turn him into an acquisition officer. And I think what he'll tell you, quite frankly, is uh, he had no idea uh, what went out in, uh, here at Hill with regards to the things that we do to sustain the ICBM force. Uh, and so uh, he, he ended up with an education over the course of the next couple of years uh, while he worked here at Hill for his first stint as a, as a, uh, a now uh, major, I believe. And uh, as, uh, as he's going through all of those uh, interesting experiences, learning the ropes with the acquisition force, uh, he's actually continuing to build 
uh, the breadth of his experience and his knowledge with regards to uh, what the uh, ICBM weapon system is capable of doing, all of the things that go into uh, maintaining uh, that capability out in the field and uh, back here uh, on the on the SPO and on the on the depot end of things. And uh, at the end of his time, Lee's with really a, a very broad and uh, and deep understanding of uh, the entire missile system now that uh, ranges from the time that he started out as, as a missileer at, at Great Falls all the way through to his time in space control and then through the, through the SPO. And, and in fact, that experience is uh, such a, a coveted thing at this point uh, that STRATCOM snags him out of, uh, out of our uh, clutching grasp here at Hill and uh, finally ships him uh, far enough away that he can't see the mountains anymore uh, to Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, in Lincoln, he, uh, he spends a number of years on the STRATCOM staff, the United States Strategic Command staff, uh, where uh, he holds multiple roles. And, and again, I think uh, if you were to look at his bio and, and you were to see his surf, uh, what you would find out is that uh, uh, Nick doesn't seem to hold down a day job very well because uh, he ends up in a different job just about every single year of his career. Uh, but unlike uh, most instances where that would uh, suggest that so somebody can't get it done. In Nick's case, it's actually an exemplar uh, for just how competent he is, and he keeps getting snagged. So uh, he showed up uh, there on the, on the STRATCOM staff as a missile defense officer, uh, but it doesn't take long for uh, his, st his strategic brain to get identified uh, as uh, somebody that the general wants uh, up close and personal with him, and he gets uh, snagged up to be uh, the JN3 uh, exec officer, and uh, there he spends time supporting General Brown uh, over the over the course of uh, of the next year, uh, supporting that mission and uh, ensuring that uh, right we we continue to uh, from a war fighting perspective uh, optimally deploy uh, what and how uh, the weapon system is is going to be targeted, and that's fundamentally where he ends up. Uh, he ends up in the in the targeting business there at Stratcom, and uh, he, he's able to you know, lend his considerable talents to the way that STRATCOM actually figures out uh, where and what warheads are going to put on what foreheads, as the saying goes. All right, and then, uh, right, success continues to breed additional demand signals. So he goes from supporting U.S. STRATCOM to uh, headquarters Air Force. And uh, when he goes to head, headquarters Air Force, uh, he, he's actually handed an, uh, an interesting proposition. Uh, he gets there, and, and based on now the, the string of jobs that he's, that he's had, he's actually in a very unique position with regards to uh, his, his credentials and his experience uh, to help start filling in a critical element to the enterprise uh, that in some ways has kind of uh, languished in the corner. And that's on the nuclear command control and communication side of the house. Uh, so Nick was actually asked to stand up the NC3 office there at the Pentagon uh, and, and help uh, build a capability uh, back up and around uh, our uh, secure comms and our uh, ability to make sure that the, the National Command Authority and specifically the president always has the ability uh, to communicate uh, nuclear-related uh, weapons uh, information uh, to, to the forces, uh, not just in the ICBM arena, but also to the air delivered side of the house and to uh, the sub side of the house. Uh, and so, uh, so Nick did some uh, hard time there for about two years in the Pentagon, uh, getting all that stood up. And uh, what he'll tell you is the, the think pieces that he was able to put together while doing that job uh, were uh, unabashedly ripped off by uh, no one uh, less than the chief of staff himself. Uh, so that ought to tell you the quality uh, of uh, Nick's thinking and the, uh, the quality of uh, where the NC3 enterprise was moving uh, based on the degree of uh, attention that he had from senior leadership across the Air Force. Uh, so uh, absolutely uh, amazing work there, uh, standing up the NC3 shop. Uh, and then uh, he got a return ticket punched back here to Hill. And uh, we have been truly blessed over the last five years uh, to have uh, Nick O'Dell's experience, uh, his thinking, uh, his, his professional acumen, 
uh, his deep knowledge of the weapon system and uh, his commitment to this mission as an integral part of the leadership team here uh, in the ICBM Systems Directorate. Uh, and I can tell you uh, personally, uh, having worked with Nick now for the last almost two years, uh, and for the last uh, uh, year in particular, with all the uh, changes that we have uh, thrown on the organization, uh, that as my uh, military deputy, uh, he has uh, lifted and uh, pushed uh, far more than uh, anybody had any right to expect out of uh, out of a deputy. And uh, so, Nick, I just want to personally thank you uh, for your ongoing commitment to this uh, to this weapon system into this mission. And uh, we couldn't have done it without uh, everything that you have uh, contributed here over the last couple of years to, to making it happen. Um, so, so that's kind of a, a quick rundown of, of uh, his, his professional career. But I, I just wanted to uh, maybe put a, a little bit of a, a personal touch here on a couple of things. Because I asked Nick, uh, right, uh, can you kind of give me the highlights, the, the key accomplishments here from, uh, from your career? And, uh, you know, what sticks out to you after uh, a quarter century of service? And, and uh, I think in, in true form, the things that stuck out to him and the things that he highlighted to me uh, were the people along the way uh, that built into Nick's life uh, and uh, helped him grow professionally, helped him grow uh, personally, and helped him grow in his faith along the way. Uh, and... Uh, one one gentleman who uh, figured prominently in, in Nick's uh, life was uh, Major General uh, Brown that uh, Nick served as the XO uh, for there at uh, U.S. Stratcom. And uh, Nick just uh, related to me uh, how much of a mentor uh, General Brown was to him and uh, how much he learned from the general when it came to balancing uh, faith, family, and, and profession. And uh, unfortunately, uh, General Brown and his wife were, were tragically killed in a plane accident in Virginia in 2013. Uh, but, but Nick just wanted me to uh, call out uh, what, uh, uh, what a significant uh, role that they played in his life uh, as, uh, as he's coming up through the ranks. And then, quite frankly, the other thing that he wanted me to uh, emphasize and, and that uh, uh, he places a great de a deal of emphasis on and, and feels like is a highlight in his career is the last five years that he spent here. Uh, and if you've heard Nick talk at all, uh, given the breadth of his experience and the places that he's been, he will tell you that uh, it all starts here. It all starts here in the SPO with the systems directorate. It starts with the weapon system itself. It starts with the capability uh, that we have on alert with gyro spinning 24-7 uh, that uh, the absolutely magnificent men and women of this directorate uh, maintain day in and day out uh, when uh, everything else uh, misses with regards to our ability to support this weapon system. And uh, his role in this, uh, this mission, his role in this organization, and uh, the opportunity that he has had to influence and affect uh, significant outcomes and decisions with how we're going to support and maintain the weapon system uh, ha have been absolutely pivotal with uh, our ability to continue to maintain and sustain uh, the capability here for the better part of the next 20 years uh, until the ground-based strategic deterrent can be fielded. Um, and so, uh, uh, Nick, I think it, it says a tremendous amount uh, to, to the whole team uh, when uh, somebody with your experience, uh, with your uh, gravitas in the weapon system and the mission uh, highlights what a significant role and uh, in place that uh, the, the team here and uh, the SPO mission has with regards to our ability to prosecute uh, the deterrent, uh, nuclear deterrent mission. Uh, and so uh, with that, let me, uh, let me just double check my notes here and uh, make sure that there isn't any other key points that I want to make sure I hit here before we, uh, before we wrap it up. Um, let's see. Oh, so I almost forgot to get back to the hunting, the fishing, and the camping routine, right? So uh, in the middle of all these things, uh, right, Nick obviously uh, figures out how to maintain uh, his firm grounding in his roots. And, uh, and so uh, all of his kids have been brought up to uh, love sports, the outdoors, and uh, uh, camping and horses, et cetera, et cetera. And Nick's uh, intention here after he hangs up the uniform is uh, to head back up to Montana 
and uh, and uh, catch up on all the fishing and the hunting that uh, has been uh, unfortunately denied to him in his previous assignments. Uh, and so as he does that, obviously, uh, uh, he's in a, in a great position there as he's, he's moving back to help mom and dad out on the on the, on the family, uh, the family homestead there to, uh, to make up for some lost time. And, uh, when I asked him, uh, for goals in life and, uh, whether or not there were any parting words of wisdom that you'd have for the, for those of us that were, uh, still continuing on, uh, he, he, uh, he made this statement. Uh, he said his goal has been nothing less, uh, than to serve and, uh, uh, in, in service, uh, uh, and, and to uh, his God and to his country and to his family. And for uh, any of you that know Nick, uh, you know that uh, that is absolutely coming from uh, the heart and from uh, the core of who he is. And uh, Nick, as a, as a witness and a testimony uh, to me personally with regards to what service looks like, uh, I, I thank you for your example. Uh, I thank you for uh, your witness and your testimony. And uh, right, I wish you all the best as uh, you and the family head off into this next great adventure. Uh, I'm uh, quite frankly uh, a tad bit jealous, uh, but uh, recognize that uh, you've got a higher calling and, uh, and recognize that uh, you have uh, served your country well uh, with dedication, commitment, and patriotism uh, for a quarter of a century. And, uh, and we thank you for that and, and for the legacy that you're leaving behind. Uh, and so now, Derek. I think it's time for us to move on to uh, the formal part of the ceremony. Thank you, Colonel Cropsey. At this time, Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas O'Dell will receive the Meritorious Service Medal. Please stand for the presentation of the award. Publish the order. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Meritorious Service Medal second oak leaf cluster to lieutenant colonel nicholas j odell jr for meritorious service from 24 july 2015 to 31 july 2020. lieutenant colonel nicholas j odell jr distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the united states as deputy minuteman 3 system program office intercontinental ballistic missile systems directorate hill air force base utah during this period lieutenant colonel odell guided the five billion dollar per year Minuteman 3 sustainment and acquisition portfolio, standing up the Air Force's first ever intercontinental ballistic missile program depot maintenance program, and shepherding $2 billion in upgrade programs into production and delivery. Colonel O'Dell supported countless emergency sustainment and maintenance activities in direct support of the 20th Air Force's nuclear deterrence mission. The program office's maintenance efforts focused on reducing the risk to the aging Minuteman 3 weapon system resulting in refurbishment of 164 boosters, 154 launch facilities, and 21 launch control centers, ultimately reducing the warfighter's off-alert sortie rate by over 80% and increasing survivability by 425%. During this period, the system program office directly contributed to 18 operational test launches valued at $432 million and an overall 99.8% missile on alert rate delivering Air Force Global Strike Command, the United States Strategic Command, and the President of the United States, the world's foremost nuclear capability. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Colonel O'Dell culminate a distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Colonel Luke C.G. Cropsey will now retire Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas J. O'Dell, Jr. Publish the orders. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force, Washington, D.C., Special Order Number AC-010968 to Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas J. O'Dell, Jr., Hill Air Force Base, Utah, effective 31 July 2020. You are relieved from active duty, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Systems Directorate, Hill Air Force Base, Utah, and retired from the United States Air Force, effective 1 August 2020. After 24 years, one month, and nine days of faithful and honorable duty, per Air Force Instruction 36-3203, in the grade of Lieutenant Colonel, by order of the Secretary of the Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
I will now read the certificate of retirement from the Air Force Chief of Staff, the Armed Forces of the United States of America, to all who shall see these presents, greeting. This is to certify that Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas J. Odell Jr., having served faithfully and honorably, is retired from the United States Air Force on the 31st day of July, 2020. Signed, General Dave Goldfein, Chief of Staff. I would now like to read the Certificate of Appreciation from the President of the United States. Certificate of Appreciation for Service and the Armed Forces of the United States of America. I extend to you my personal thanks and sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with the devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of military service. I trust that in the coming years, you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you served. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, Donald J. Trump, Commander in Chief. It is now my honor to present the United States flag to Lieutenant Colonel Odell. This flag was flown over all bases. Lieutenant Colonel Odell was stationed throughout his story career to include Mount Strom Air Force Base, Montana, Cheyenne Mountain Complex, Colorado, Offutt Air Force Base, Nebraska, and the United States Pentagon, Washington, DC. And lastly, Hill Air Force Base, Utah. The flag of the United States of America is the ultimate symbol of freedom, which you have defended May this flag always remind you of the nights to which you expired and your personal accomplishments during your dedicated service to the United States Air Force. I will now read a letter of congratulations from former president of the United States of America, George Walker Bush. Dear Nick, thank you for your service in the United States Armed Forces. I am proud to have served as your commander in chief and I'm pleased to join your family, friends and colleagues and recognizing your career and accomplishments. Throughout history, the dedicated men and women of our military have protected our citizens and preserved the ideals that make our country strong. Their courage and sacrifice have inspired countless people and have helped shape America's character. On behalf of a grateful nation, I thank you for your contributions to our security and to the cause of peace and freedom. Your service, patriotism, and selfless devotion have helped advance the universal hope of liberty at home and around the world. Laura and I send our best wishes for health and happiness in the years ahead. May God bless you, and may God continue to bless America. Sincerely, George W. Bush. Lieutenant Colonel Odell also received letters of congratulations from former President of the United States of America, William Jefferson Clinton, and Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Chief Master Sergeant Calleth O. Wright. I would now like to invite Mrs. Jennifer O'Dell to join the live stream for the Air Force Retirement Pen presentation and the presentation of the spouse's certificate. Mrs. O'Dell, would you present your spouse with the Air Force Retirement Pen? This pen is to be worn on your uniform with pride. It signifies to everyone that the wearer of this pen has served his country well and honorably. Now I would like to read the Spouse Certificate of Appreciation from the United States Air Force. In grateful appreciation, the United States Air Force presents this Certificate of Recognition to Mrs. Jennifer D. Odell for the commitment and numerous contributions that made positive impacts to the nation's defense. Thank you for the support which gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service. Signed, General Dave Goldfein, Chief of Staff. I would now like to invite Eli Odell to stand next to his father and join us for a presentation of his own certificate of appreciation as we recognize him and his other siblings for their own sacrifices made in support of Colonel Odell's distinguished career. The certificate reads, in grateful appreciation, the United States Air Force presents this certificate of recognition to Eli J. Odell, 
for the commitment and numerous contributions that made positive impacts to the nation's defense. Thank you for the support, which gave strength and purpose to your father's service. Signed, Colonel Luke C. G. Cropsey, Director, ICBM Systems Directorate. Thank you, Mrs. O'Dell and Eli. It is now my distinct honor to present to you Lieutenant Colonel Retired Nicholas J. O'Dell, Jr. Can everybody hear me okay? Copy that. That went too fast. I don't have all my thoughts together, so uh, we'll just kind of wing it here. Um, first off, I'd like to uh, thank God for blessing me and my family uh, in so many ways. I'm blessed with a great wife, great children, and a great career. Uh, Colonel Cropsey, I'm honored that you uh, that you accepted to preside over this retirement ceremony. Um, I don't, there's no other option for me. We thought about pushing the retirement ceremony um, to where we could have something in person, but um, there's no one else I'd want to uh, retire me. So thank you, sir, for doing that. Truly appreciate it. Um, I would like to thank the great airmen who worked so hard, jumped through hoops to make the ceremony happen. It was on. Um, and then we started getting the COVID thing that was off. Um, we we're going to do a ceremony with some masks. Um, that didn't quite work out. So now we're doing a virtual ceremony. Um, first off, Magistrate Sergeant Flores, um, thank you for taking uh, the task of leading up the ceremony and the shadow box and um, all the things to help me get, get retired. If I didn't know any better, you were trying to hurry me out the door, but um, you've done a great job, and I'm truly grateful uh, for what you've done for me while I've been here for the ceremony and what you're doing for all um, all the military across the directorate. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, Captain Holzapple, Captain Troya, two great CGOs who represent the future of our Air Force. Um, uh, they both have done just a, a tremendous job here in the directorate. Um, doing their normal day job and they've also done a great job helping me out with this uh derek thanks for putting all this together the schedule the paperwork the metal um it's truly appreciated um this couldn't have happened as well as it's happening if captain troya um hadn't taken this on um you could have given this to me and richard fawcett um and we would have screwed everything up because we're old and we don't do tech uh, so Captain Troya, uh, thank you so much for the Skype coordination, the web recording. Um, due to COVID-19, I really didn't think this was going to happen. Um, and I am truly thankful to you uh, for putting this all together. Thank you again. Uh, Mr. Fawcett, thanks for your prayer today. Um, and thank you for uh, being my friend over all these years. It's truly appreciated. Um, which... This was gonna be part of the ceremony if I had an in-person ceremony, uh, but I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, my friend, uh, Liz Ziegler, um, who um, made a wonderful retirement cake um, that I couldn't really share with many people. Um, uh, I, we'll try and show a picture here. Um, we'll see if Austin uh, brings up the picture, but... Um, she made this wonderful retirement cake with a with an American flag on it, Air Force symbol, and of course a Minuteman three um, smashed down in the frosting. Um, so I would like to thank her for uh, thank her for making uh, that cake for us. Um, thanks to COVID, I ate about 15 pounds of the 20 pound cake and added about five inches to my waistline. Um, so thank you for that, as I had to pour into this uh, service for us today. Um, so where to start? 24 years of emotion, all bottled up, trying to put thought and logic in how to express a man's gratefulness to his God, his country, his friends, and his co-workers. It's a hard thing to do. Um, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do is to um, try and put that into perspective and try and get closure on a career. 
So I'll try and I'll try not to go long. Um, there's only eight pages, but it's an old man font. So it won't take too long. <laughs> As you heard from Colonel Cropsey, um, I had just some fantastic assignments um, from joining the Air Force to see the world, going to Vandenberg to see the ocean for the first time and going straight back to Malmstrom uh, to start. It was just fantastic and there was a reason and a purpose for everything. Um, so Malmstrom, Cheyenne, Hill, LBSD, um, uh, our, our, our uh, GBSD brothers um, are picking up that mantle and they're gonna be the uh, replacement to Minuteman 3. Um, so I'll just do the shout out now that uh, um, I just wish them the best of luck moving forward. Because uh, when me and Richard were here the first time in LBSD, um, we kind of drove that into the ground. Well, I don't think it was our fault, but um, we weren't quite ready for um, what me and Richard were trying to do back then. Um, let's see, then we hit Stratcom, Pentagon. Uh, Pentagon was an interesting story. Um, as I stood up the NC3 shop, um, um, I was a branch of one. And my partner next to me, Brad Evans, uh, Major Evans was one in the requirement shop. So between an 05 and an 04, uh, we had the entire NC3 and ICBM portfolio uh, requirements rise, Jason's requirements um, to ourselves. So um, that, that was very unique and I thank you for that. But every assignment was just awesome, was just awesome. Um, Sometimes when you're in the muck and when you're in the fight, um, you you can't see out of it, you can't see over it. Uh, but when you can look back, you can truly reflect and see what what the what great assignments that they were for me and the family. Um, my last assignment here at Hill um, has been absolutely fantastic. Um, Colonel Crops, you already mentioned it, but it it really in my mind is the pinnacle of my career. Um, I could not leave the Air Force and retire from a better position, from a better job. Right here at Hill, we have the best mission, the best job in the Air Force. Sometimes frustrating, sometimes exhausting, um, but very rewarding. Our mission is to, is to deliver 400 combat-capable Minuteman III missiles that are safe, secure, effective, from now until deactivation. So just soak that in. We deliver 400 combat capable men and three missiles. Our nuclear mission, backbone of peace and freedom for the United States. Deterrence starts right here at Hill Air Force Base. If you don't feel it, if you don't see it, pull yourself out of the mud and just ponder the breadth and scope of the mission that we have right here, right now. Folks from Minuteman 3 have a, tough, uh, have a tough task as we move forward, funding challenges, engineering challenges, sustainment challenges. Minuteman 3 will be a Hall of Fame weapon system, but we're not in the Hall of Fame yet. We're still the starter. We're still on the field. We're carrying the ball each and every day, and it's critical um, that we do so to get, uh, to get us over the goal line. To the men and women, of the ICBM Systems Directorate, that includes GBSD, Minuteman 3. I thank you for your service. It has been my honor. Over, over the last five years here, uh, I've been privileged to work with uh, a lot of you guys in Minuteman 3. Um, and I would, I would like to just call out a few folks that I'd like to say thank you to. Um, I can't get everybody, um, but we'll just give a shot at a couple here. Uh, Miss Jerry Muir, she was my first bar boss when I got here. We were flight systems division. I, I was her deputy with Rock Bushman. Um, um, great boss, great lady, and a great lead, great leader for sure. <clears throat> um, we transitioned from uh, flight to the Minuteman Three Division, adding flight and ground together. Um, I'm just so thankful for what I learned from her 
uh, her, uh, she fought so hard for Minuteman 3. Um, and Minuteman 3 wouldn't be where we're at today without you. Um, so Ms. Muir, thank you. And I'm proud to have worked with you and served with you. Also with me from the beginning was Rock Bushman um, as the civilian deputy under flight systems. Uh, Rock's name says it all. He's rock solid from beginning to end. I'll miss working with you. It's been an honor. And I thank you so much for being my friend. Ms. Turbot, she started as the branch chief in RSRV when I first got here, uh, but she also went uh, with uh, me and Rock through multiple reorgs, multiple leadership changes. Um, and we all three ended up running Minuteman 3 for a time. Ms. Amy, you are truly an all inspiring and great team building and a great leader. Amy, it's been an honor working with you. Thank you for being my friend. Colonel Cropsey, your leadership has been transcendent, awesome and inspiring. 24 years in the nuke business. Um, and one thing that's always been a challenge is morale and uh, common sense. Believe it or not, the nuke enterprise struggles with that sometimes. <laughs> but I am truly appreciative of your leadership uh, that you brought to Minuteman 3. You're a dynamic leader um, and you've laid a foundation here at Hill to put Minuteman 3 on the right track uh, until we deactivate. It's been an honor to serve with you leading the men and women of Minuteman 3. To all the other leaders in Minuteman 3 and in GBSD and at the directorate, I thank you all for your service and your dedication. I'm honored to have served with all of you. There are two, uh, two common threads. I know you guys thought I was about to end, but I'm not quite. There's two common threads that, um, that span my career or themes, I guess, um, that span every assignment. And that's the lifelong friends, the brothers and sisters that we made along the way. Malmstrom being my first assignment made, made dear, long lasting Christian friends. That's where I first became a Christian. We have friends there to this day that we love dearly. Um, Colorado Springs, Stratcom, it's no different, same theme, great people, great church, great folks. And then Pentagon at Virginia, Warrington Church of Christ, Great people, great friends, great family. Here at Hill, I'd like to call out specifically our brothers and sisters at the Wasatch Church of Christ who, uh, who are uh, watching. Um, thank you for your friendship, your prayers, your encouragement, and your love. I don't know if I have the emotional capacity to put much more into words. Um, that's pretty much all I can get, but... Um, we have truly been blessed across all our assignments. Um, you know who you are and how much you mean to me and my family. Uh, you made every assignment a blessing. Now to the last thread that uh, I was talking about is um, that spanned my career and that's of course my family. Um, they've been right, right there the whole time, unwavering, giving me full support for every move, seeing new locations, to new challenges. So I'll take just a minute to talk through a few of that. Oh, and before I forget, um, and first off, and it's definitely not the most important person that I'm going to recognize, but uh, if you can figure out how to watch uh, the link, um, I'd like to say thanks to my little buddy, July Travis Hardesty, um, who's been a lifelong friend for service, and he continues to uh, be my best friend over the years. Uh, so thank you, little buddy. Now to my mom and dad. There's not, <clears throat> it's hard to uh, form words, so I'll just read it, I guess. Uh, dad, thank you for everything. You've always been my hero. You've raised me tough. You raised me to be a man. When I promoted to 05, it was a great opportunity to honor my dad. Um, Colonel Cropsey mentioned that he was in Vietnam. And he was, and I'm proud of that. Um, he was drafted into the Army in 1968. 
served with Company B, 54th Signal Battalion. Partway through, he was attached to the 5th Special Forces Group and served with Green Berets as a radio man. So thankfully, you came home alive, Dad, as being a radio man. Uh, thank you for your service, and I love you. Mom, you are beautiful inside and out, and you have the most beautiful soul. You are loving, caring, and kind, and you take after Grandma, too. Jen, the kids, and me, thank you, and we love you. Now on to my wonderful kids. My wife and I have been blessed with three strong men. First, Donovan, John, and Eli. <clears throat> All three are destined for greatness. Thank you, boys, for being tough, having great attitudes, and making it easy in your own life. You're such strong men of courage, men of faith. Thank you, boys. I love you, I love you all. Michelle, my favorite daughter. You're truly a light of hope. You're beautiful inside and out, and you have the biggest part. And I am so proud of you and what and what you will become. Uh, lastly, obviously, I guess maybe the most important. Uh, on to my beautiful wife. It hasn't always been easy over the years, but we made it through together in faith. I'm so thankful for you. Jen homeschooled three boys and one girl from learning to read through high school with three graduating top of their class, the Odell, <laughs> top of their class, the uh, Odell Home School of Conservatism and Excellence. We have one more to go. Good evening, right? It's home school. We don't know what grades they're in. <laughs> anyway, Jennifer has devoted her life to teach and raise our children in a manner that's pleasing to God. Jen, you've always been there with me. For almost 24 years, you stood by me, you support. I love you and I look forward to this next chapter together. Um, so Jen doesn't like flowers, she doesn't like you have being on the screen right now. So if I talk too much, she'll blush and hit me. Um, um, she doesn't need fancy things or um, expensive things. Uh, she doesn't like flowers. So the only thing I can get her is jewelry. And I know she'll like it because she mentioned one time that she liked it. So um, as uh, just a token of thank you and um, as a promise moving forward, um, please accept this room. That's what that means. Fits perfectly. Huh? Cool. All right. Can't lose with jewelry, right? Um, I think that captures my career. Um, I didn't think I'd be nervous and flopping around, but it's been kind of nerve wracking a little bit. Um, but it, I think it captures my career very well. God, family, mission, focus, worrying about nothing, uh, worrying about nothing less than that. And it has brought forth blessings and relationships over 24 years that will last for them. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change my family, my jobs. I've been brought right here to this base for this mission, to this community at just the right time. And although it's hard, this is the right time to hang up the flight suit. With that, I thank everyone and God bless you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Odell. The men and women of the United States Air Force are proud to have served with Lieutenant Colonel retired Nicholas J. Odell Jr and assure him that he will always be a valuable member of the Air Force. We wish him and Mrs. Odell every success in their, success in their future endeavors. After the playing of the first verse of the Air Force song, please add to the YouTube chat or grab your phones and text Lieutenant Colonel Retired Nicholas Odell 
a few kind words of congratulation. This concludes our retirement ceremony. Thank you everyone that made this retirement possible, particularly our broadcasting expert, Captain Austin Troya, and the overall planner, Master Sergeant Yvette Flores. And thank you all for dialing in.